This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Rental Success Podcast. It's your host, Heather the Bear, and I am super delighted to be back with you as ever. And today with my business partners, my son, Mike Bayer, and Jason Beaton. Hey, how are you guys? And we are coming to you. Let's say we're coming to you live, hey? Yeah, yeah, we can do it. We're doing a little bit of an experiment today on the podcast. We're actually recording it as well. I mean, actually, we've always recorded it, but we just don't make ourselves presentable. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so, so this time we're actually recording the video. So if you are listening to the podcast uh, through your podcast app on your smartphone or you're in the car um, or you're at the gym, uh, if you want to, to, to join us as well live, uh, we're going to start um, producing these podcast episodes with video on YouTube. So just head over to YouTube and search for Vacation Rental Formula uh, and you'll find our channel. And if you want to see our smiley, happy faces, then you can join us uh, with video as well. And that was Mike talking, but of course that's uh, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason, how are you? Say hello. Hey, I'm doing great. This is this is this is going to be a fun little change of pace for us. I'm, I'm looking forward to the to uh, the, the video aspect of this. Yeah. So how how are you guys? How how is everybody coping with the situation as it is now? Well, I'm, for me, uh, you know, if you didn't know, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, the, this, I'm Heather's business partner and CEO and co-founder of Vacation Rental Formula. And as well as that, I'm also a full-time firefighter um, in a large metropolitan city just outside of Toronto. Um, and yes, it's been very busy. Um, it's been busy handling uh, COVID on the front lines. Um, but at the same time, it's probably, we, we've had a, a big downturn in a lot of nuisance calls, which we would normally have. So generally speaking, on the work front, it's uh, it's it's been it's been good. Really, n- nothing to to really report too much about. Um, the home life, um, if you did not know, um, both my kids were staying with Heather for six weeks uh, while we figured out daycare and, and that kind of thing. While my wife, who's a paramedic, and I kind of did all our shifts and everything. But we uh, we actually brought them home a few weeks ago, so that's been a change of pace. We had six weeks kid free, and now we have the kids back, and it's yeah, we, we can't we can't have um, sundowners every afternoon beginning at two. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to take the grin off my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so it's definitely a change of pace to back to homeschooling and uh, and, uh, and it certainly uh, decreased our alcohol intake, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> and Jason, Jason, you've got three at home, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, sure do. Uh, Eleven, seven, seven, and four at the moment, and yeah, that's been a huge, huge change for us. You know, doing doing the whole homeschooling thing, and then um, actually just this week we're going to start. Um, all of our extracurriculars are about to start start back up a little bit. We've got uh, some baseball coming up this week here in Texas. We've got um, our scouts are kind of doing some things, but not really. So it's been definitely um, an adjustment period for us, more more of a slowdown than, a, than our normal springs, because usually we've got uh, three soccer teams and three baseball teams and uh, Cub Scouts all going on at the same time. So, yeah, Mar- uh, April and, and May and March have all been – much slower this time this time around <laughs> yeah yeah you're usually busy but this is a great segue into you saying things are starting up again and and certainly things are picking up in our business uh this past weekend which is a long weekend in uh, in canada uh has been the busiest we've had for about two and a half months i guess and we are taking bookings just minute by minute at the moment and i'm hearing this right the way across the u.s as well where places are beginning to open up vacation rentals are beginning to open up and i know there's some pockets where where there's still uh some bands around but it seems like it seems like there is some um some sun on the horizon 
Yeah, and, that, and that's a really good sign. And we're hearing this on forums right the way across that there, there was a lot of trepidation as to how quickly bookings were going to pick back up again. And generally speaking, we're starting to see this across the board. I mean, as, as Heather said, here in Ontario, Canada, we're already starting to see the bookings pick up for, for July and August. Um, and we're seeing it right the way across the US as well, where there are a lot of, uh, a lot of people reporting that as the restrictions are being lifted, uh, bookings are just beginning to flood in, uh, which is definitely reassuring. I mean, this will hopefully be indicative of what's going to happen in every uh, state, county, jurisdiction. Um, but we will just have to wait and see, really. And I know there's, there's all sorts of things around this. There's, there's the extra cleaning, you know, the additional cleaning protocols that people are going to have to apply. And in some places, uh, I hope not many places, uh, are having to hold back on doing a change over the same day and having to leave a property for 24 hours or 48 hours. We, we've heard from our um, health units that that is not necessary. We don't have to do that. And Airbnb really, I think, jumped the gun on that one saying, you know, it had to be a property had to be left empty for 24 hours and then maybe even another 48 to 72 hours before you could have somebody else go, somebody go back in. And this, this is one of these things where Airbnb have, have leapt in and taken control over our businesses and we've had absolutely no say. And this has happened so many times in the past six or seven weeks. Um, as they've changed their policies with extenuating circumstances. I've, I've heard from, me, from a lot of owners that they haven't been paid for uh, vacations that took place in March or early April when they were still allowed to do them. And th there's, there's some, clearly some issues with Airbnb. And it sort of leads me into what we want to talk about today, which is, is, is booking direct. Because I think if, if there's something positive that's come out of all this, it's that a lot of people have come to the realization that they need to diversify the marketing. And we, we've been saying this for forever, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, we've often, often said, and it doesn't matter what you're doing with your business, is, is it's not a good idea to build your business based on or completely reliant on another business. It doesn't matter whether it's Airbnb, whether or not it is, you know, one cleaning company, whether or not it is, you know, one platform for your website. Um, you always have to have some kind of backup plan, some kind of contingency, should that business that you are 100% relying on for that aspect of your business fails you in whatever way, whether it's a technical failure, whether it's a failure in customer service. Um, primarily, what, what it comes down to is how are you um, presenting your business to your guests? Um, because that is the bottom line is how are you, you know, how is it going to damage your brand? Um, and we'll talk a bit more about branding in this episode and about how important it is to be able to distance yourselves from the online travel agencies. So when people are booking a vacation with you, they don't think I'm booking a vacation with Airbnb. They're booking a vacation with, you know, in Heather's case with Cottage Link. Um, that th they recognize the fact that, you know, they've booked through, it's, it's a bit like Expedia. I think some people think that they book their vacations through Expedia, um, uh, but they're flying with American Airlines. And it's like, well, no, you, you, you booked American Airlines, but th that was just the, the, the way to facilitate you making that booking. Um, so we're going to talk about that some more in this episode. Yeah, absolutely. And just, um, just I, I want to get off the, the whole COVID-19 thing, but just one thing to mention um, we've, we've all seen these models and we've seen a lot or we've heard a lot of talk about the second wave and what's going to happen in the fall and coming into winter as we get into normal flu season uh, again. And if, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, if you go back to doing the same old thing, same old, same old, you're back to just Airbnb because they're bringing you the bookings and they probably are now. Uh, because things are picking up. But if the second wave comes, they're going to do it all over again. And you will be back in that situation of not having control. So I think now is, now is the time. If you haven't started to plan your book direct strategy, then do it now so that you're in a great, much better position when you get into, into the fall and winter and this potential second wave. Um, what, what do you... What do you think about that, Jason? 
Well, yeah, it's, it's just like, you know, the restaurant that, that uses only one food supplier, you know, that for, for their, their source of, of supplies. So it's, it's definitely something that's been talked about several times uh, throughout the last several years, is this booking direct. And, um, you know, hopefully the conversation we're going to have today is going to help inspire somebody to get moving on that direction and, um, you know, make sure that their, their owner or that their properties are booked direct ready and uh, can, they can start making, making plans to uh, start utilizing like that. Well, I wanted to just start off with you know, just voicing some of the objections that people have have made. You know, when I talk to them about, you know, you really needed to book direct and, oh, yes, well, how will anybody ever find me? That's, that, that's the first one. And, and it's a very valid uh, thought that, you know, if, if I'm out there on Airbnb or Expedia or Booking.com, they're there right at the top of the uh, of, of of the page with their ads um we don't know when those ads are going to start start up again because if if no if you haven't noticed those uh, those google ads aren't there anymore you don't see airbnb at the top or expedia or booking.com because they took those ads down about six weeks ago uh it was costing them a lot of money um they are going to come back up but we we have this opportunity now to get out there and be seen so, but that's one of the objections. No one will find me. The second objection, it's too difficult. It takes too much time. And now, of course, I'm busy because I've got all these bookings coming in from Airbnb. And it's, it's just a little bit of a catch-22 situation. And then the third one is I don't know where to start. So those are the, those are the three things I'd like to talk about today and see if we can come up with some sort of solution. And we, we did say we'd probably make this a, a little bit of a series and, and come back and do this again, right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I, we're going to hit a little bit more on the I don't know where to start, but I, it's worth listening. If, if you have started to listen to this episode and you, you're already thinking, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to get into Book Direct because I don't know where to start, please listen all the way to the end because we're going to talk a little bit about a program that Jason and I created uh, two years ago that we're going to be re releasing in the next week or two. And we want to give you some information on how you can find out exactly where to start and how we can walk you all the way through the process. So we can talk about that a little bit towards the end of the episode. So the first thing I wanted to say is it's not an overnight thing. You know, it's where is it is an overnight thing just to uh, put your listing on Airbnb and get it out there. It's not an overnight thing. I know this to start a website and to create a brand and to set up your booking engine so that people can book directly through you rather than someone else. And we'll, we'll cover that a little uh, in, this, uh, in this episode, but perhaps we're going to come back again and, uh, and talk about this in a little bit more detail maybe next week. Because, but of course, you can continue to use the OTAs while you're building your brand anyway. So what, what we're saying here in the, in the book direct um, topic is you don't have to just take your listings down and turn over to, to, to your own website while it's under construction. You just continue with the OTAs and you start to use them and take control over them rather than them taking control over you. I think one of the things that I always talk to brand new short-term rental business owners about is don't worry about the marketing in the outset. Focus on, you know, you know, make sure you've got a really good listing on, on the listing sites such as uh, Airbnb, HomeAway, as well as your local listing sites as well. There's going to be some local websites in your area. But the main thing is, is to make sure that, that, you know, those companies are taking care of those bookings and processing those guests and the payments, because that's a very large amount of work to, to take on. Um, and that's where people say it's, it's too difficult. It takes a lot of time. It does. Um, but once you, once you figure out the systems, then you can take control. So if you're brand new to the business, I still highly recommend you get started with Airbnb, uh, HomeAway, VRBO or Verbo. And, and allow them to take that um, huge amount of work away from you while you focus on the operations of your business in the outset. So while you're trying to figure out, you know, how to provide the best possible guest experience, how do you, um, you know, communicate with your guests when they're staying with you and convert those guests who have booked through those OTAs, how do you convert those to being people who come to you and your business in the future and they don't go back to the listing on, on Airbnb? 
Um, Because I've seen countless times the amount of owners who, you know, in promoting their property will send them directly to their listing site. They'll send them to their listing on Airbnb. And it's like, hang on a minute, you have people who want to book with you and you're sending them away so you can lose 20% of your business or more. It just is, 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 Jason and I just like, we go, well, wow, that's it. And it's, and it's so amazing how the OTAs condition you to think that that's the way, that's the only way you can run your business. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, I've, I fully uh, agree with that. I've seen this so many times. Somebody will spend a long time building their own website and then they don't mm-hmm. have the means for anybody to book on the website. So at the bottom it says book now. And they press that button, it goes straight to the Airbnb listing. Right. Which, you know, it's, it's, it's just a complete waste of time. And you, and you know, Heather, you know, mo, mo, the vast majority of the, of the book direct setup and, uh, and what everything that owners need to do, it's, you know, 75 to 80% of it is actually not involved in marketing. Right. So it's, it's your, 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 your payment gateways. It's, it's the ability to have to just to have someone be able to book direct with you. It's uh, your, your follow-up email series and your, and your um, kind of guest relations that happens after the booking. Those are all opp- opportunities to bring the, bring your guests back into, in, back into your fold and your business um, by u- utilizing the traffic coming from the OTA. So it's definitely that hybrid model you were talking about earlier. And I think everybody's got this great opportunity. If you are getting busy again and you are getting people back, they're coming through the OTAs. Every single person that comes into your property via that route, by the time they leave, they need to know that they did not book an Airbnb. They booked your property. Mm -hmm. If they want to come back, then they should book directly with you because they're going to save that booking fee. And, and in, in many cases, that booking fee is, is very large. Mm-hmm. I, I, spoke to, I spoke to a guest the other day who was look, want, looking to book one of our properties through, um, through Expedia uh, Canada Stays, and she was having just so much difficulty with it. And, and we, we don't ever try and take people away from, from Canada Stays. Uh, I don't feel that's ethical, um, blatantly. <laughs> but if if they are, if they're saying, you know, I'm having a really tough time, I don't think I'm going to bother with this at all. Well, I'm not going to let them go. So at that point, we might say, you know, well, have a look at the listing on our site. Here's our site. We still don't encourage them to book directly. We just let them let them find their own way. And this particular lady found out that she was going to save $550 on her booking just by booking through us and not them. And I think anybody who's new to the industry may not realize that that there is quite a large um, um, hashtag book direct movement, which is a movement to help guess that, um, you know, there is this opportunity to book directly with um, an individual property management company or an individual owner. Um, really what it comes down to is, is the, how comfortable a guest feels by moving away from the big brand. Um, you know, guests will feel super comfortable going through Airbnb because they'll be guaranteed, you know, uh, you know, stay protection and, you know, is guaranteed to a certain standard and there'll, there'll be somebody to advocate for you from Airbnb if there's problems. And I think that, you know, sometimes one of the reasons that guests will, will, rather do that and going through the large OTAs is because they simply don't feel the comfort level with, with your brand. Uh, and I think that that's um, a really, really important aspect of this is, is developing. I mean, we, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this in a moment is, is, you know, having your website as the cornerstone of your business, you know, the, the show home uh, or the showcase of your business. And you, and that's where you build the brand and you can demonstrate that you can provide exactly the same things as Airbnb um, or Verbo. Uh, you, you can give them the same kind of satisfaction and guarantees that they can if they book through those, those OTAs. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's the very, very first step is being able to reassure those guests that they can step away and save a whole bunch of money by coming to you directly. Uh, I think that's really, really important. Yeah, it's that, re- it's that reassurance um, because they have, they, they, they've drunk the Kool-Aid. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, as, mo- and, as, as most owners have. <laughs> yes, yes, that, uh, that I'm going to be looked after and cared for by this big company. Um, so, so it's up to you as the owner or property manager to convince them and to tell them and help them understand 
who they're booking with and the fact that you know you're local you've you know your area you love your guests you've been in this business for a long time um i just want to give you i mean i hadn't mentioned that um, my my company cottage link rental management books around 80 percent of our guests directly directly through through our website and we are aiming for 100 percent by the end of this year in fact we we have taken all our bookings off airbnb and we will no longer be using them so we've made that commitment um the next commitment will be will be moving away from um expedia and canada stays uh, um, no, I, I think in all transparency, we should also say that, you know, how long has Cottage Link Rental Management been in business? 16 yeah, years? 17 years. 17 yeah. years. Um, and so we, we actually started out before there were the big listing sites. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, one of the assets that Heather and Cottage Link Rental Management have is that they, you know, even guests who come through the online travel agencies, um, they are able to ensure or ensure that they get that client's details or, or their contact information so that way they can be contacted post stay and then followed up with around you know you know over the next 12 months in case they want to book next year and then you have them come and book with you directly using um, email campaigns uh, newsletters things like that to keep those people wanting to come back to your business not coming back to um, in, in our in, in the case of Ontario Canada stays or Airbnb yeah and and there always will be those who who, who feel that they have to book through the large OTAs, who, who feel that, that they are being protected. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, but we want to, to push our brand and everybody should be pushing their brand to spread this reassurance that booking through a property manager or an owner directly is just as safe. So do we have just a few minutes just to very quickly talk about um, how we build that brand? Um, I mean, Jason, do you, want, do you want to pick up a couple of things from, from, from the, our course about what we do to encourage, you know, the, the brand building? Yeah. Uh, you know, when we start looking at branding, the, the, um, one, of the, one of the key things is really your, your, your avatars, you know, nailing down your ideal guest. Uh, you may have two, three, four, five avatars depending on, on your your property and and where uh, you know if if you have seasons or you have high season, low season, et cetera. Um, you know those those avatars are really the key in developing your brand. Um, your your key avatars could also help develop help you develop your um, your things such as your your color palettes and your fonts when designing um, your logos and stationery and things like that. So, um, kind of the first step is, is once once you get your, the, the legal name and that, all that stuff taken care of is really a sit down and developing those avatars of of you know who, who is your rental um, really designed for? Is it kid friendly? Is it family friendly? Is it uh, really um, more more of a place for couples. So uh, nailing down those avatars is really going to be kind of step one in, in the whole process. And then I think you can always build that avatar into how you present on the listing site. So it's difficult to do. I mean, it, most listing sites will not allow you to, you know, watermark your photographs or anything like that. Um, but certainly, for instance, in, in the, we talk a lot about the listing sites, how you leverage things like your head or your title for your listing. Um, so let's say, let's say your avatar is, you know, you're trying to attract families with, with young kids under five and um, who love the water. I mean, let's say your property is on the, on the shores of Lake Ontario, for example. So in Airbnb, you might list your property as um, a perfect family friendly property for, for young children on the shores of Lake Ontario. Um, you might want to shorten down that title just a little bit, but include in there somewhere your brand name. Um, so for example, I myself had, or used to have a property on the shores of Lake Ontario called Seabreeze Cottage Rental. And I specifically chose that business name because it kind of fit in with the avatar. It, you know, I wanted people who were specifically looking for, um, big water. Um, our property was on a beach. Um, and so simply my title in Airbnb was, um, Seabreeze Cottage, family friendly, located on shores of Lake Ontario. Um, so, so I was able to actually get the title I actually had, a, a, you know, a title for my property, um, rather than just an address. And, and that makes it so, so much more emotive to people. It, you know, it, it lodges in their mind, um, that name. And when people arrive, I had a sign at that, you know, there was a sign in the driveway 
uh, which had the logo that I'd had created, plus welcome to Seabreeze Cottage. Then they go into the cottage and everything in there, anything like the, the welcome guide, um, any, um, we had some postcards that people could, could send home. Um, we had all kinds of literature in the area. Everything was letterhead stamped. It had the same coloring that we had on the website. It had the same logo, the same feel. Um, so it was very obvious. Like if somebody ever booked through Airbnb or Canada Stays and they arrived, they're going to remember Seabreeze Cottage Rental. Um, when they arrived at the cottage, I would call them and say, welcome to Seabreeze. Um, you know, I've talked to them very briefly, you know, just obviously check to make sure that they got in okay, if there's anything I can do. Um, and just to let them know that, you know, our business, Seabreeze Cottage Rental is, is here for you. And we really hope you come back and stay with us. Um, and just a reminder to go to our website, Seabreeze Cottage Rental, where you can find some information about the area. So when they're staying at your property, you're getting them to go to your own website, not Airbnb, to go and find out, you know, sample itineraries that they can do while they're staying you know where are they going to go find the wine tours where are they going to go and find the golf courses you send them to your website um and then there on your website you might have something where they can give you their email address and you'll send them like a pdf um, map and uh, you know basically something they can have on their phone and and take with them as, as like a, a day trip example so you, you know in a in a very quick you know, 90 seconds, that is some of the basics of how to kind of capture people from the online travel agencies and indoctrinate them to your brand. So they recognize you over and above who they book through. Yeah, I think that, that's really important, Mike. And your goal should be that anybody who comes from an OTA to your property, if you have not got their email address by the time they get there, you must have it by the time they leave. And there's a number of different ways of doing it. Um, there is, oh, now I'm, I'm stumped now because there is some software that will now, that you can use. So when people come in to- And they want to get the Wi-Fi. Access the Wi-Fi. It's called StayFi. 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 S-T-A-Y-F-I. Um, we'll, we'll put the link in the show notes. And so the only way they can access the, um, the, the Wi-Fi password is to give their email address which I think is pretty neat. And then you have that. Yeah, that's perfect. That, that, that's, that's a very, very smart way to do it. Um, as I said, like if, if you're listening, uh, just head across to vacationrentalformula.com and go to the show notes. Or if you're watching here on YouTube, uh, just check out the video. Uh, sorry, check out the comments below and we'll, we'll have the, uh, uh, the links for you right there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I keep meaning to check, uh, to check that out, um, StayFi, because it sounds like such a great, uh, <clears throat> a great, resource to have and th there are other ways um leaving uh, postcards in your property that are branded to you and um you know, that people can then send to their to their friends that's that's another way of just getting your brand out there and a really but neat one too is when you get those those postcards printed up is get one made as a magnet or oh, sorry, get a, get a, a stack made as a magnet. So maybe you have like a little a goodie bag for your guests. Uh, I, we know a lot of property managers who do that. They'll you know they'll have like a tote, uh, maybe a water bottle or two, and then you know get a magnet made that they may take back and put on their fridge at home. You know, simply you know a montage of pictures of your property. It was simply wish you were here, and then your website, um, which maybe they'll put on their fridge and you know that, that remind them to come back and book with you. Something super simple, very inexpensive. You can probably get five hundred printed through Vista Print for like a hundred bucks. Um, and you know, that will be, that will pay dividends, um, come to the next time they're thinking about booking another vacation. Yeah. The other thing to do, of course, is to have a digital guest guide, something like touch stay where, mm -hmm. um, on w one of the pages in the digital guest guest guide, it just says book direct next time and ask for their email address. So, so there's, there's plenty of ways of, of getting this, this email, address one one way of course is to call them just at the end of their stay ask them to leave a um uh leave you a uh review and get into conversation just have that conversation with them so, did you like my house <laughs> you know it's not airbnb's house it's my house and is there anything i can do to make it better for you next time and can I send you one of our newsletters? Yeah, 
all, all that kind of stuff is great to be able to gra- grab them. Um, and, you know, it's, and it's all about relationship building. You know, that's how they're going to trust you to come and book with you next time is when you've built that relationship during their stay. You know, you, you haven't just grabbed their money and, you, you know, you don't care about them and then they leave and phew, we didn't have talks to them this week. Um, if, if, you, if you feel yourself having that kind of mindset, it's really important to try and pull yourself out of that because it's so important to be able to get to know your guests. Um, as I said, like the property I had, uh, we had it for seven years. And in our last year before we sold the property, we had this one girls group who came back five times a year for girls weekends. Um, and they just absolutely loved it. Never wanted to go anywhere else. We knew them all by first name and we, we know, knew, knew what favorite wine they liked. So we'd make sure there'd be a bottle or two of their favorite wine. Um, it, you know, those kind of relationships, that's how you build a business. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, Jason and I talk an awful lot about automating business to make things easier for you, but that must not take away from the personalization and customization of your business where you're actually relationship building and you'll find, you know, any successful business, business, you know, that is client or guest customer focused, you know, that relationship is what makes the business. So I want to address this, um, some, this, this objection, it takes too much time. It's difficult. It's challenging. What, you know, it, it does take more time than just listing on Airbnb. But uh, can I have your take on, you know, how you'd answer that one? Whew, yeah, I mean, uh, the time factor is always going to be a question. But, you know, I, I always go back to, you know, would you rather be spending the time and investment to build someone else's business or the time and investment to build your business? Um, especially when, 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 you, when you know you're going to be around, and this is, you know, for, for a lot of you, um, this may be your, your retirement plan. So you're going to be here for five, 10 years in this game. You know, um, I think it's an investment well worth, um, re- well, well worth the, the time investment. Um, and in addition to that, it's, you don't have to do it all in an instant. It can be, you can kind of chip away at it over, over the course of several weeks or several months to um, eventually come to it. Just like we let, let off with the, the top of the show with, you know, there, there's this transition and from relying on OTAs uh, to being able to set everything up so that way you can be booked direct. So there's definitely this transition and you can live in both worlds um, for, for however long you need to. So um, there, there's no, deadline other than your own deadline but again uh, if you're in it for the long haul the time investment uh, you know building your business for someone else's business is, is certainly well worth it and that's the other thing too is is the time and effort you put in now um yes it will take a bit of time to get started and, and to learn everything and to get comfortable with it but it will be something that will stay with you whether whether it's just this business or you do another in the future um, I think, you know, if there's anything the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us um, about well, pretty much anybody with a business is that, you know, the value of being able to take your business online where you don't have, um, I mean, obviously, our business, uh, vacation rental business that, you know, it, it is brick and mortar. You, you're selling accommodation in a property, but your ability to be able to get out there and reach people, you know, in the digital space Um, you know, people are now learning or being forced to learn how to do this. And I've seen this countless times. I mean, I've got my martial arts gym that my kids go to and to see them, which is very much, you know, they are a, you know, just a display store, you know, people will, will go in and look for membership because they've seen them, you know, either advertised on, um, you know, somebody else's Facebook page, they they promoted that their kid is going to that gym or they just happen to walk by and go for a membership. Now I'm seeing that gym is like, fully online because they're closed. They have no business. So now they've gone fully online where they're doing online classes and they're doing, uh, you know, paid, uh, paid um, traffic without you paying for Facebook ads. And they are, you know, taking membership bookings online. It is a completely virtual business right now, which is fascinating for, for, for a martial arts gym, which is, you know, martial arts typically is, is a very, Close quarters kind of thing, really. Contact sport. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a contact sport. So to be able to run it virtually, and they're doing very well. Um, it's actually been phenomenal. They've actually seen an increase in in child memberships. Um, not so much on, on the adults, I think, but um, but certainly the ability for the kids to be able to go and do you know a structured hours training through um, you know through video conference. Um, has been very, very successful. And it's, it's, been, it's been a real testament to see how a business like that, which would not typically be throwing itself into the online and digital space. Um, but I think, you know, as a, as a short-term rental business owner, you have to realize that once you learn that digital marketing aspect and how to manage and completely operate your business online, 
um, and have the control of it yourself where you're not relying on somebody else to do it for you, that will, that will, as I said, take you years and years down the road. You know, whether you have one property, whether you have 10 properties, um, it's, it's or, as I said, if you go into another business completely, this skill set will be able to live with you for, for a very long time. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's a learning curve, quite a steep learning curve to start, but let, let's come to that. So where do I start? I've never done this before, Jason. I've, you know, I've always had my property on a single OTA and it's worked for me very well until they gave everybody back their money. And yeah, so yeah. now I want to do this myself. Where do I start? Let's go practical on this. Yeah, so I mean, obviously step one is to be able to, to uh, get yourself a website of some sort. Um, and, and, um, and, and that have the ability to take payments online. So um, what that, what that may mean, instead of building your own WordPress site or building your own website, um, if you're just now getting started, it may mean that you look for a property management system um, that has a website aspect to it. So, you know, Logify, Logix, OwnerRes, most of them now have some type of, of website aspect to it. Um, if you want to kind of future-proof yourself a little bit, find one that has an integration with something like WordPress, one that you can actually you know, have a designer design your website. But um, that's, that's really kind of step one in getting all this is you've got to figure out a way to take payment um, and you had to have an online presence. So if your property management system can, you know, do both these in one fell swoop, then let, definitely go for that one before you start um, trying to build, build your own website. Let's get you the ability to take a reservation online um, along with the availability calendars and things like that. Because that, if you if you look at what, um, you know, some, somebody who books through Airbnb, why do they do that? They do that because it's simple. They can get on their phone, they can, they can see an array of properties, they find out what they like and they can press and it says book now and you can go one press and I'm booked. So that's the most important thing. They don't want to be sending, they don't want to be sending you checks. They don't want to be sending you faxes. Are, are, are there still such things as faxes? Some people, yes. <laughs> I mean, they, they, <laughs> yeah. something I saw recently when I was on a website uh, and it was a beautiful property. And as I always do, I'll go the whole, the whole way through the website looking at their, looking for their booking form. It was send me an email and I'll let you know what the availability is. Uh, yeah. uh, nobody's going to yeah. do that. You have just lost them from the moment you tell them they've got to go somewhere else or they've got to send you an email. So you've got to have some, some form of site with everything on there so they can do it like they do it on Airbnb. Yeah, and you have to have the systems where, you know, when things change, especially availability is a good one. You don't want people coming to your website and seeing that a week is available. But in fact, that you booked it with somebody three or four days ago, but you forgot to update the availability calendar. Um, so, I mean, in the past, I have typically recommended to individual property owners that you can do this all by yourself. You don't need a PMS, a, you know, a, a property management system where, you know, it will do all this for you with, with, with automations. And I, and I think that's beginning to change. I, I think they're really probably not beginning to change. It's very much changed. I really do feel that you, even with a single property, you need to be investing in, um, you know, a booking system, a reservation system like uh, Logify or Owner Res. You know, if you're a small business owner, you have maybe one, you know, maybe one to five properties. Um, that is going to allow you not only to automate your system. So when somebody does make a booking, you know, it will adjust the availability automatically. Um, it will spit out the relevant emails that need to go to your guests automatically. So all of those things will help um, make things more efficient for you, but also from a professional standpoint, when the guest is still trying to build that trust with you, you're showing them that everything is, is really, really professional. Um, and then, you know, once you begin to grow, then you can, you know, look at um, some other additional tools that you can add in to make your life a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. Once once you get to that point, you know, you can certainly start adding in, um, you know, the, the you know, bringing a designer to, to build your own website. That way, you're again, you're not, you know, building your business on rented land, so to speak, um, and, and move forward with some of the more advanced things. But as Mike said, the ability to kind of take payment on your own site, that's that's certainly the most important way uh, to, to stand out and establish your professionalism right off the bat. 
So one of the things that Jason and I really look for in, in, a, in a PMS or a, a you know, reservation system, you know, the terminology is very interchangeable, um, is to make sure that you are able, there are all, there's functionality within those systems to be able to plug them into your own website. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we talk a lot about Onares, Logify, uh, I believe iPro out of the UK that they're doing, I think they're more for a larger property management company. Um, but you want to have the ability when people go to your website, you know, when you finally build your own website, which should be a high priority if you don't have your own website, even if it's a one page website, at least have something. Um, and we, we'll, uh, Jason and I both talk about that a little bit more next week on the podcast. Um, we're, we're currently in the negotiations with a, a website designer who will actually be able to provide at a very low cost, um, a, a basic website for you if you don't yet have one. So, so stay tuned for next week's episode. Um, but I think that, yeah, to be able to have your own website that is not built as Jason said on somebody else's land, you need to be able to have what's called widgets or plugins that will connect your website and your PMS seamlessly. So when somebody goes to your website, they're not being directed away somewhere else. They're not being landed onto a completely different site to make a booking. Um, so I think that that's the end game goal is to have a website that has your booking engine built right into it. It looks seamless. It looks beautiful and it makes it super easy and super professional for your guest. Uh, they don't feel any inkling that they're being, you know, taken somewhere else or something isn't completely above board. And I think sometimes people feel that when that, when they, they go to a, um, you know, to a Facebook page, for example, and then you, you go and make a booking and, and it drops you into some bizarre looking uh, booking system. Um, so, so those are some of the things to take into consideration. And uh, the, did you know there's probably around, I think it's somewhere between 235 and 250 different property management systems now available. You know, when we started out, there were, there were you could count them on one hand. And mm -hmm. now there are hundreds of them. And, and it's really, um, but both of you have come up with the same ones over and over again. We hear Logify, Logix, um, Onares. Um, I'll put all of those into the show notes. Um, owner res is one that a lot of um, small property managers are using. Uh, I did interview the founders of owner res some time ago, and I'll put the uh, link to that uh, interview because it's really important that if you're looking for, for this, you actually go out and find somebody who's using it, who's successful with it, and, and that also that you feel comfortable with the company. I mean, we, we had, as a company ourselves, we had a, a very poor experience with a property management software about eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. And that, that bad feeling has stayed with us ever since because, you know, learning these things is, is not, uh, not easy. And uh, we've, had, we've had bad experiences. We've had some good experiences. And we're currently in the process at the moment of, uh, of looking for a new one ourselves. There is another inherent challenge with a lot, of, you know, having that many software companies uh, producing um, uh, property management programs um, is that they don't all last. Um, and I think that is a, a very large challenge and, and, and the nervousness that a lot of us face, especially if we have one right now and we want to switch to another one. Um, and through the, the latter half of 2019, um, there was um, a, a big rash of larger companies coming in and buying out a lot of these smaller ones and merging them. Um, and at which point, many people who were with the smaller company lost all of their customer support. Um, they had, you know, they had their entire biz business built up in and around this property management system. And, you know, essentially any help that they were getting just vanished overnight. And then they had to then convert or wait for this larger company to get their staff into position. And that can take away from, you know, six months to a year for them to get on their feet with, the, with those companies. So it's, it's always good to, to, to kind of step back and look at the field if you can. And, you know, coming to places like Vacation Rental Formula, connecting with us on Facebook, um, ask the questions. Um, we have a great free Facebook group called the Business of Short Term Oh, I can never remember the name. The business of short-term yes, rentals. Uh, short-term rental and property management. There you go. So if you, if you, the, the link for that is also in the show notes. So that's a great place to come and ask questions. I mean, we have a few thousand people in there now. And, um, you know, ask your peers. If you're nervous about switching, um, you know, this is one of the age-old conversations in the vacation rental businesses. What property management software are you using? Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it, it creates some... 
I mean, their entire conference is built around this subject. So it, don't be, uh, don't feel like you are the only one who is having challenges trying to find the right, the right software for you, especially if you're starting out or if you're looking to change from what you already have. Yeah. And I, I just give you a little bit of advice is, um, don't fall for the bells and whistles and all the, all the fancy stuff that the salespeople are offering you. And in fact, I would actually avoid any company where you actually have to talk to sales reps before you really get into what this thing is going to do for you. Um, we're working with a company now that we think we will probably go with. And, and we've talked to the founder of the company and the technicians and the people who actually are doing the programming and, and feel super comfortable. There's no bells and whistles. The website's not fancy. But as, as we used to say in, uh, in England, it, we know it's gonna, it'll do what it says on the tin. Mm -hmm. Jason, well, and not only that, yeah, not only that, but um, you know, if, if it comes up where you do have to change your property management system, now all those bells and whistles and all the, all the programming you did in that system is now kaput. You know, so um, this is another reason why Mike and I have, uh, have recommended in the past that if you're going to build some type of automation or you're going to build a guest reminder system or anything like that, um, have it in its own platform. That way, um, it's not a matter of if, but when you change property management systems, all that hard work doesn't just go out the window with it, right? Um, so again, like Heather said, something that, that you know, performs the core functionality um, uh, of taking a booking, updating a calendar maybe notifying one, you know, one or two people, but you can usually build that in in other places. Um, look, look, look for the core functionality first uh, because you can, there, there's so many um, systems that you can use outside of that to build any type of marketing or to build any type of automated, you know, whiz bang guru stuff. So for sure. Yeah, you're absolutely right to stick with the core functionalities. And so, so there we are, you know, where do I start? Look first for the, for the website. And, and some means of somebody being able to make a, a booking quickly and easily. And we're going to come back to this, but, uh, but we're, we're moving on in time now. And I know, Mike, you wanted to talk about, um, about Vacation Rental Marketing 2.0 and the re-release of it. So over to you on that one. Yes, yeah, so, so this was a program that Jason and I created about two years ago, and, and this was in response to the dramatic number of people who are looking to m move away from the OTAs and become more self-sufficient and kind of really live the, the book direct mantra. Um, and what we've done is we've created a step-by-step -step program to walk you through. So basically, if you, it really is, is for people with an existing business. Um, we do kind of stipulate that, that this program is really geared towards, you know, people who already have a property, they may be, maybe have a year or so behind them of, of rental. So, so that they're comfortable with the operations. As I said, at the beginning of this episode, uh, you know, I, I really mentioned it's so important in the outset of your business to focus on your operations first, get those running completely smoothly and then you can switch your focus to them because once you do switch focus to the marketing that's where your focus needs to be um, so it's, it's very important to you know step one step two kind of deal um, so we start off at the very beginning as Jason had mentioned you know that the very beginning of marketing is to figure out who you're marketing to um, so we focus on we have a, a module on focusing on you know figuring out who your avatar is deciding exactly who it is that you're supposed to be marketing to and you know Airbnb and Verbo and all those OTAs they have their avatars they know who their their ideal customers are and that's who they market to if you can't tell with uh, with Airbnb they're marketing to females and I'm not sure if you, you, you realize, but pretty much that their entire website is pink. Uh, there is a reason for that. That's because in most booking groups, the female of the group tends to take the leadership role when it comes to booking vacations. Um, so it's a bit of a no brainer, you know, for all of us in the vacation re rental business is if you focus, I mean, give a lot of focus on marketing to, um, to females, that's where, that's how that's going to help you with every aspect of your business, whether it be, as Jason said, the type of font, your colors, things like that. That will then move into your branding, which is our next module. We talk about branding, how to you know, develop your brand, or that would be you know, how to get a logo, how to um, make sure your branding is uniform you know, across your social media platforms, on your website, on your listings. Make sure that you're easily recognizable um, so that way people will keep coming back to you. 
and that's real foundational stuff. Then we move into uh, creating a website. Uh, as I said, we are currently in negotiations with a, a fantastic web designer who's going to help us out with some, um, um, some, I don't want to go into too much detail yet because we haven't finalized things, but some possible um, done-for-you solutions uh, that will allow you to get started if you don't yet have a website. Uh, and we can also give you recommendations of resources that are going to really help you to get your website up and running and, and working more efficiently. And then we talk about lead capture, how the, uh, the ability to you know, take those email addresses you get, whether people are booking with you directly or you're able to get those email addresses from people who are coming through the online travel agencies, how you can then begin to market to those people year round. Uh, and that's really important is, is getting that brand in front of people throughout the entire year, not just when people are looking to book a vacation because they will forget you if you don't keep presenting yourself um, periodically through the year to them, whether it be through email, whether it be through paid advertising through Facebook and Google. Um, so once you've built those leads, um, then you can, you know, you can really build that digital relationship with them. And that's our next chapter as we talk about how you build that di digital relationship um, and, and how not to treat your, your email list just like a stack of emails. Each one of those, each one of those emails is a real person. And those real people are actually looking for real relationships. And as I said earlier, that's how you build a business is by developing those relationships with your people, uh, with your guests. And if they're not guests yet, then hopefully by building a relationship with them online, they will become guests in the future. After that, we talk about um, how to do paid traffic. You know, once once we um, once you've built all this, this 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 marketing machine, how do you then turn it on and actually add the the juice to get all that traffic coming to you and your business and your website and not to the OTAs? Um, and that's the point. You know, you you make a big gut decision on on how much um, how much you're willing to spend on on your marketing. Up until that point, it's all been um, sweat equity in hours, not in in money really. Um, but you can really leverage a very small amount of money on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to increase the traffic to your website with a very specific focus that you know that they're actually already looking to book a vacation or, or you know that they're interested in, in a vacation in your, va in your rental destination. And then last but not least is how do you track all this? How do you make sure that your system is working really well? How do you know where to plug the holes? How do you know where to add in a little bit more time or a little bit more money? Um, and, um, and we do that in our last chapter, which is all um, analytics, um, which is not the most sexy of, of subjects, but it's a really good one where we're going to show you the basics of Google, Google Analytics and other market, sorry, analytical tools that you can use to keep a really good eye on everything. I just want to add in there that, um, that one of the best things I ever did was, was learn how Google Analytics, and it's so much fun. Well, not only is it is it fun, but you get to see where you get to see like where you never have expected in your in your booking system. Um, I, well, Jason, do you want to explain that with with Cottage Link? Yeah, but yeah, I'm all you know, about um, pet friendly. Yeah. Uh, so what what we saw and really um, granted disclaimer as, as soon as you get a website as soon as you get any type of platform get google, google analytics installed that way you can at least have the data to look back on um so with that out of the way yeah so what we did we actually started to look look down um and not only see the pages that were most popular but more importantly actually look at the search terms that people were using to find cottage link okay and one of the search terms that we saw over and over and over again was pet friendly so um you know heather in your specific case was you know prep pet friendly rentals in Ontario, um, um, Lake Kawartha's pet friendly this, um, I mean, just every variation of pet friendly you can think of for the, for the location. Um, so we, we built a landing page specifically for, from that data, right? So from that data, we, we were able to, to start catering our marketing to that. So we did, we spun up some different Facebook ads for that. We also made a landing page specifically for pet friendly properties. Um, and then also we we wrote more content for pet promoting pet friendly um, opportunities to, to to bring your pets on vacation with you. So um, that's how that's a real world example of how getting into the data from Google Analytics you're able to see these types of um, you know the, 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 this type type of, of content marketing opportunities. And, and there was also a really amazing data point we saw is, 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 is as you, you know, using your, your tracking, your analytics, you can see people as they come to your business, you know, you see them, you know, how many people click your paid ad on Facebook, how many of those come to your website, then when they get to your website, which properties do they look at, once they get to the property, do they go to book, 
And we saw this very, uh, this, this absolutely shocking statistic that the people who were getting to the booking page, it was a very, very small percentage were actually click, like we were actually completing the booking. Um, and what we realized was is that, you know, I, the company was doing its due diligence by asking all, all the right questions. It needed, you know, the names of all the people who were staying. It needed the, um, you know, their address and their telephone number and, you know, what's the composition of the group and, you know, why did you choose this property? And, it, you know, there was a certain element of questionnaire in there as well, but it was long and it took about probably 10 to 15 minutes for, for guests to actually fill that out and make their booking. So what we did is we changed that to these are the dates you want. This is the property you want. This is how much it is. Pay here. And we saw a dramatic increase in the number of bookings. Later. Sorry? Yeah. And then give us the information later. Yeah, yeah. get the money first, yeah, get absolutely. the other information later. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. we would never have discovered that if we hadn't have taken the time to dive into the analytics to really look at how people were moving through the website. Uh, and that was a big hole, and, and we were able to plug that and, and get a lot more bookings in a very short period of time. Um, we'll put a link, actually, to an episode from uh, late in 2019. I think it's called um, How We Saved Our Summer. Uh, where we talk about a lot of the things we did with, with Heather's website, um, using a lot of the things we're going to talk about in the VR Marketing 2.0 course. Um, so that will give you a good insight as to the kind of things that you're going to be able to pick up if this is a course you're interested in. Excellent. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're running out of time now, Mike. So we'll, we will need to wrap this up shortly. Yeah, so if you're interested in in, uh, in checking out uh, Vacation Rental Marketing 2.0, just to go across to the show notes or below this video if you're watching on YouTube, um, you can also go directly to the link, which will be vacationrentalformula.com forward slash VRM20. Easy. Easy. Anything <laughs> more you want to add, Jason, before I sign off? We will be probably – I mean, are we coming back next week to um... – to continue this? Yeah, I think so. I think we've got, we've got a ton more information that we, that we can share. Um, yeah. If you have listened to this episode or watched the video and have more questions, um, again, head across to the Facebook group, The Business of Short-Term Rental and Property Management. Um, it's, it's free, you know, just, just request to join and, and we'll, we'll get you in there. Um, but please ask questions in there. Um, let us know and we can answer these questions for you next week on next week's episode. Yeah, and I'm going to include the probably something around eight, eight to ten pieces of content that you have to have on your website when you build it. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Hey guys, thank you. Till next week. Absolutely. <laughs> Till next week, and uh, I'll talk to you. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you again probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye bye. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.